Hello everyone, welcome back to Innuendo, my own story that I wrote back in secondary school. We're on chapter 3 called Keep Yourself Alive. Well, let's begin. James returned to sleep once he got his strength back. But before he returned to sleep, he said, Oh God, please don't let this... Let... Sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing. Let me just add a pass. Okay, there. <coughs> James said, Oh God, please don't let what is ha penning. James then, James then fell to the floor. When James fell to the floor, he saw the black figure once again. But the figure said, Mustafa will pray for you. But you are damned and will. James fell asleep before the figure could finish what he was saying. James then woke up in the morning, but the TV was in static mode. James opened his eyes and slowly got up and pondered and asked, Why was I on the floor? And I don't remember turning on the TV. James continued to turn off the TV and then went to the exit of the motel's room. Then met the manager and asked, and the manager asked, How was your night? James replied, Um, I don't know. Did you hear that wind last night? It was wicked. The manager replied with confusion in his voice. What wind? James took a breath and thought to himself, Did this guy not experience the loud wind from last night? James asked the manager. Um, the wicked wind from last night, it banged on my motel door. To which the manager replied, I think you need to see a doctor, my friend. James and the manager entered the sign-in booth. And James said, I do think that. I don't even feel well. Is there a nearby doctor or therapist around here? The manager said, There is a therapist and doctor about five miles from here. I'm sure he can help you out. James said to the manager, Um... Thanks. I'll try to find the doctors. The manager replied with a uh, good day. Good for you, even. Not good day. <sighs> James then started to walk to the nearby town for the doctor. James was walking down the street, and there was a car that passed, and it stopped just a little bit in front of James and asked, Hey, mister. Would you like a ride? James stood next to the car's door and looked at the driver. Um, yeah, I'm going to the nearby town. The driver then responded. Yeah, I can drop you off of the town. Get in. James then went down in the car to the town. The driver asked. So, why are you going to town, mister? James didn't reply and looked to be just staring out the driver's front window. And then the driver asked, Hey, mister, mister, are you okay? James then got red eyes and the driver stopped the car and said in fear, Mister, oh my god, your eyes are blood red. And James then grabbed a small sharp object from the bottom of his bag. The driver asked, What are you doing? James pulled his hand out of his bag, and the driver shouted, Get out! Get out! James said, No, you get out! And James proceeded to whip the knife into the driver's neck, and repeatedly stabbed him, and got his hands covered in blood. <laughs> James then got out of the car, and went around to the dead man, and pulled him down to the nearby river, and grabbed and put a blanket 
over the man. And this blanket was the blanket that the man had in the car. That sentence is a little bit broken. I'm going to make it a little bit more clearer in editing. In my spec, you don't see it, obviously. Car and carried the body down to the river and put the body down there and cleaned his hands and walked away and got into the car and drove half a mile up to the town and put the car onto the side of the road and locked the car with the keys and threw the keys away where he thought no one would find it find them and continued to walk to the town James eyes went back to normal when he got close to the town he then looked around the town looked alive and found someone and asked them I'm sorry where is the doctor and the townsperson replied it's just down the street to the left and you'll see dr white's office james replied and said thank you very much jameson continued toward the office <coughs> james then arrived outside the doctor's office and knocked on the door and asked out loud hello doctor white I'm James, and I'm in town because I have serious mental problems, he laughed. A door in the back creaked open, and then the doctor came out and came to the front door and said to James, Oh yes, oh yes, come on in, my friend. James and the doctor went inside the office and headed upstairs, and while they were walking up to the office, the doctor said to James, you know, I don't usually just give sessions to people off the street. Then the doctor sat down and continued to say, But I can't help, I can't not help people who might have, as what you call them, mental issues. I mean, no, I don't call them that. I call them that. I don't like to judge. James then said to the doctor, well, I guess that is nice. The doctor then insisted that James would sit, and then the doctor offered James a drink, and James de denied the drink. I don't drink, but thanks anyway. The doctor continued to ask James, So, um, what exactly did you want to talk about, James? James continued to tell the doctor, Well, I have been recently having these odd dreams. Doctor said, "What a, what happened in this dream you've had? What was there anything that made it odd?" James said, "In the dream, I was strapped onto a bed in what looked to be an abandoned hospital, and there was this weird doctor." James then realized the doctor he was talking to looked like the doctor from the dream, but ignored it. The doctor said, Did you get to see what hospital you were in? Did you recognize the hospital, or have you been there before? James said, I told you I was strapped to a bed, and I couldn't move and I couldn't see anything, or where I was. The doctor said, When and where did you have this dream, James? James said, Let me just turn that down. James said, I had this dream in a motel. Oh, what was it called? Um, it was called Killer Queens. And no, I have not been there before. Before the dream, I felt woozy. And then I fell to the ground backwards. And then I saw this strange black figure. And I believe it said, Mustafa will pray for you. The doctor asked, Have you seen this black figure before the motel? James said, Yes, I saw it once on the street when I was walking home, and I just presumed I was going ever so slightly mad. But then I saw the damn thing again in the motel. Is it trying to tell me something? Because it's doing a terrible job of doing so. The doctor said, James, calm down. That's the first step to solving these things you think you're seeing. 
Strange says. Think? I don't think I'm seeing them. I know I'm seeing them. You don't believe me, do you? The doctor said. Of course I believe you, James. And I want to help you, James said. Then for the love of God, do something helpful, the doctor said. I'm going to have you stay in this facility for a while. For just about, let's say, a week. And I will give you meds to make all the madness go away. You think meds will help? Oh God. The doctor says, yes I do, James. Meds always help. James started getting violent and got out his knife. And the doctor said to James, I just wanted you to go by your own choosing. But if this is how we have to do it, then so be it. James lifted up the knife closer to Dr. White, and then he lost his grip, and the knife fell straight to the ground. And James asked, What did you do? And James was injected with a tranquilizer and fell to the floor, and the doctor came over and said down to James, We will make everything better. Don't worry. <laughs> And James was then taken to a mentally unstable cell. And James had handcuffs around his wrists. And he then started to wake up in the cell and called out, Where am I? Anyone? Hello? Then a nurse came in with one pill and a cup of water and said to James, Take your meds, James. And James then stood up off the bed. He was lying down on and asked the nurse, where am I? The nurse responded with, just take your joy, I mean meds. Uh, James asked again, where am I? And the doctor said to James in a threatening tone of voice, James, if you don't take your damn joy, I mean meds, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was just me, it's not actually written down here, I will give them to you. James said in an angry tone and shouted at the doctor, I don't need damn meds. The nurse left the room and went to get a tranquilizer injector and went back to the a to the cell and opened the door and went over to James to knock him out. James waited until the nurse was very close to him and then got and then grabbed her arm and grabbed the needle and stabbed it into the nurse's arm and said violently, Lights out, Doc. James then continued to lower to lower her body. Does that say here? Why does that say here? Lower her body down to the floor and grabbed her keys to enter other rooms and exited the cell while closing and locking the door. James was going to leave the hospital. He then realized he was not going to do that, but then he heard a voice that spoke not one spoke out not once, not twice, but ten times fast. Kill the duck, kill the duck, kill the duck. James' eyes turned red and said aloud, Tick tock, coming for the duck. James went to the room called Personal Belongings and opened the door as fast as he could. But he struggled because of the amount of keys. But then James heard there was someone coming around the corner and rushed to open the door and struggled. And the footsteps got closer and closer to James. James started to panic and found the correct key, opened the door, and the doctor, not Dr. White, came around a corner and James got into the room and stood on the inside of the door and laughed gently. Well, that's a fun background. <laughs> I didn't even think about that one. Um, I have lost where I am now. Stood on the inside of the door and laughed gently to himself and ensured that, that no one would hear him. James then decided to look around and find his bag with his weapons, and after finding that the items were stored alphabetically, he then or he then looked around for the letter J 
and James then heard someone come in and whispered, Oh crap, and continued to very quietly grab his knife, but didn't look to have been touched. I thought to himself, I thought they would throw this away. And then James said, saw someone come around the corner and stab the guy in the knee and repeatedly in the stomach. And just before the man died, he muttered, Why do you kill innocent people? James responded with self-defense. He then laughed and said, If you don't mind, I have a duck to take care of. And while walking away, he said, Tick, tock, I'm coming, I'm going to kill the duck. And the man dying screamed, No! And bled out and died. James exited the personal belongings room and said, Where are you, doc? And that is chapter three. Hope you all enjoyed, and join me back for the next one, chapter four. Catch you on the flip side.